Rape is a difficult subject to talk about, and even more painful, for the one who suffered through such a horrible experience. There are 237,868 victims of sexual assault or rape in the United States every year. According to the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network 68% of sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Several celebrities have had the misfortune of being included in this statistic. Many of them have decided to speak about their experiences to help other victims of rape move on with their lives. In this video, we discuss celebrities who have spoken out about sexual assault. Jane Fonda Jane Fonda has publicly spoken about being a survivor of sexual abuse. During a March 2017 interview, Jane Fonda revealed she was raped and sexually abused as a child. In her memoir, My Life So Far, she details her experiences with abuse and the effects it has had on her life. Fonda writes about being abused by her father, legendary Hollywood film star Henry Fonda, as a child and about being raped by a former husband in her 20s. She has spoken about the shame, guilt and trauma that often accompany such experiences, and how it took her many years to understand and heal from what happened to her. Fonda has used her platform to raise awareness about the issue of sexual abuse and to advocate for survivors. She has been open about her own struggles and has encouraged others to seek help and support if they have experienced abuse. Fonda has also spoken about the need for society to change its attitudes towards survivors and to create a culture in which survivors feel safe and supported in speaking out. Oprah Winfrey Oprah Winfrey is a well-known media personality and philanthropist who has spoken about being a survivor of sexual abuse. Winfrey has revealed that she was molested by several family members and friends as a child and has described the trauma that these experiences have had on her life. Despite the challenges she faced, she has used her experiences to empower and inspire others. In her media career, Oprah has used her platform to raise awareness about the issue of sexual abuse and to provide support and resources for survivors. She has interviewed survivors, advocates, and experts on her shows, and has used her voice to challenge the stigma and shame that often surround the issue of sexual abuse. Through her philanthropy, she has also provided financial support to organizations working to prevent abuse and to help survivors heal and recover. Lady Gaga In December 2014, Lady Gaga revealed to radio host Howard Stern that she had been raped by a record producer 20 years her senior when she was 19 years old. The pop star's single Swine is about the incident. She said, The song is about rape. The song is about demoralization. The song is about rage and fury and passion. And I had a lot of pain that I wanted to release and I said to myself, I want to sing this song while I'm ripping hard on a drum kit and then I want to get on a mechanical bull, which is probably one of the most demoralizing things that you can put a female on in her underwear. And I want this chick to throw up on me in front of the world so that I can tell them, you know what? You can never ever degrade me as much as I could degrade myself and look how beautiful it is when I do. Gabrielle Union. The actress revealed to Redbook in 2018 that she suffered PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder after her book tour for her memoir, We're Going to Need More Wine. Gabrielle Union had previously revealed in an essay for the Los Angeles Times that she was raped at gunpoint when she worked at a Payless shoe store 26 years ago. On her book tour, people approached her to tell their own stories of sexual assault. I didn't realize how big the need was for so many people to just get it out, to have someone look them in the eye and say, I believe you. I cried a lot. I Skyped a lot with my life coach because the horrors that I was taking in triggered my PTSD, she told Redbook. Terry Hatcher Terry Hatcher's uncle began raping her from the age of five until the age of eight. Hatcher was convinced it was her fault and didn't speak about it for years. In an interview with Vanity Fair, the actress revealed painful memories. 
I remember him making me touch him and feeling like I don't want to do this at all. I was completely horrified. I haven't tried to kill myself, but I've certainly thought about it. She even said that it ruined her relationships with men and left her unable to have a normal sex life. Hatcher finally came forward after she found out her abuser had been raping another young girl who sadly committed suicide. Her uncle was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Ashley Judd Three-time rape survivor Ashley Judd has revealed that she sat down with one of the men who raped her to have a restorative justice conversation, detailing how she tracked down her attacker and ended up sitting in rocking chairs by a creek with him. Several years after she was raped and assaulted in 1999, the actress, 54, said that she tried to find her attacker, explaining that he surfaced very easily, allowing her to arrange a meeting with him. Speaking on the Healing with David Kessler podcast, Ashley said, We ended up in rocking chairs, sitting by a creek together. There are many ways of healing from grief. And it's important to remind listeners that I didn't need anything from him, she said. The actress called her rape crazy-making, because she knew better as an empowered feminist woman with boundaries. In 2019, while she was advocating for abortion rights, Ashley shared that she is a three-time rape survivor and recalled how one assault led to a pregnancy which she terminated. Judd has been a vocal advocate for survivors' rights and has worked with organizations to provide resources and support for those who have experienced sexual abuse and harassment. Through her activism, Ashley Judd has inspired others to speak out and to work towards creating a safer and more supportive world for survivors. Fiona Apple Much like childhood letters, Apple's songs often said what bleed from her life-inflicted wounds. Her debut album title rolled with raw emotions that poured from an ocean of misfortunes and misunderstandings. Her most tragic track is arguably Sullen Girl, which references a trauma-born despair she wanted others to understand. At age 12, Apple was raped outside her mother's Manhattan apartment. As she recalled, it happened the day before Thanksgiving. She was walking home from school when a man followed her and lurked outside her building after pressing the buzzer to no avail. Apple attempted to evade him by running inside, but he grabbed the door before it closed. He then grabbed her as she was unlocking her own door and threatened her with a weapon. After violating her, he vilely remarked, Happy Thanksgiving. Next time, don't let strangers in. The incident seared itself into Apple's brain. Fright blighted her dreams. She would stab her bedroom closet with a knife and cry. Feelings of powerlessness later led to an eating disorder that drove her to avoid foods that looked a certain way or were a certain color. This ugliness isn't obvious in the song Sullen Girl. Evan Rachel Wood In February 2018, Evan Rachel Wood testified about the multiple sexual assaults she had survived before the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security, and Investigations. She spoke in support of the 2016 Sexual Assault Survivors Bill of Rights Act, legislation she and other survivors hoped to implement in every state. In addition to documenting her own trauma and depression, Wood spoke about the importance of enacting laws like the Act. I'm here today to use my position as an artist, survivor, mother, and advocate to bring a human voice to the population of 25 million survivors in the US who are currently experiencing inequality under the law and who desperately need basic civil rights. This bill is the recognition of basic civil rights for sexual assault survivors and serves as a first step. It's a safety net that may help save someone's life one day. Rita Hayworth Rita Hayworth was an American film actress and dancer who was one of the most famous movie stars of the 1940s. Although she was not known for speaking publicly about her experiences with sexual abuse, there have been reports that Hayworth suffered from domestic abuse and sexual exploitation throughout her life. Hayworth was married five times, and several of her marriages were marked by instances of physical and emotional abuse. 
According to some reports, Hayworth was also exploited and abused by her father and other men in the entertainment industry. Despite these challenges, Hayworth continued to work in Hollywood and was widely regarded as one of the most talented and beautiful actresses of her time. However, the trauma and exploitation that she suffered throughout her life is believed to have had a lasting impact on her health and well-being. Fran Drecher Fran Drecher is an actress and comedian who has spoken openly about her experiences with sexual abuse. In 1985, Fran Drecher and a friend were robbed and raped in Drecher's home. Her husband, Peter Jacobson, was attacked, tied up, and forced to watch the incident. In her book, Cancer Schmanza, Drecher details her experiences with sexual abuse and the impact that it has had on her life. She has also been open about the difficulties she faced in speaking out about her experiences and the challenges of healing and recovery. Through her activism, Fran Drecher has provided support and encouragement for survivors and has helped to raise awareness about the issue of sexual abuse. Her honesty and courage have inspired others to speak out about their own experiences and to work towards creating a safer and more supportive world for survivors. Fantasia Barino In an interview with Oprah Winfrey American Idol alum, Fantasia Barino opened up about her horrific experience of being raped while at school when she was 14. I went home and threw away my clothes. I didn't tell my mama because I thought she would say, I told you so. I just lay on my bed and I didn't go to school for a couple of days. My mom came to me and said, something's not right with you. I know that somebody put his hands on you. That's when I knew I had her support. We turned the guy in, but going back to school was hell. The singer eventually dropped out of school later that year and became a single mother at 17. Queen Latifah Queen Latifah revealed for the first time publicly she was sexually abused as a kid by a male babysitter. And it has kept her from getting married and becoming close to anyone. He violated me, the actress said in the latest issue of Essence magazine. I never told anybody. I just buried it as deeply as I could and kept people at an arm's distance. Latifah 39 said the abuse happened over a period of time at the hands of a teenage boy who was responsible for her care. The prolonged abuse affected her other personal relationships, she said. I never really let a person get too close to me. I could have been married years ago, but I had a commitment issue, she said the Grammy Award-winning singer, who has a new album dropping in July, said she finally found the courage to tell her parents when she was 22 years old after the death of her brother. My mother felt terrible. She was kind of a country girl, so she wasn't up on how slick people could be. When I told my dad, he said nothing. He's a man of action. Latifa said she went through therapy to deal with the abuse, which she has now come to terms with. Maya Angelou Poet and prolific writer, Maya Angelou was raped by her mother's boyfriend when she was eight years old. She told her brother, who told the rest of their family. The rapist was found guilty, but was jailed for only one day. Four days after his release, he was murdered, presumably by Angelou's uncles. Angelou became mute for almost five years, believing, as she stated, I thought, my voice killed him. I killed that man, because I told his name. And then I thought I would never speak again, because my voice would kill anyone. It was during this period of silence, when Angelou developed her extraordinary memory, her love for books and literature, and her ability to listen and observe the world around her. Angelou credits a teacher with helping her speak again. She was introduced to authors such as Charles Dickens and William Shakespeare, as well as black female artists like Frances Harper and Anne Spencer. Kelly McGillis Top Gun actress Kelly McGillis revealed that she had been raped in 1982 in a New York apartment. She was a drummer student at the prestigious Juilliard School in Manhattan. Two teenagers forced their way into her apartment and tied her up, along with another female, then threatened to beat them to death, before raping them. 
McGillis later identified one of the rapists from a mug shot. He pleaded guilty and was jailed for three years. Sandra D. Child actress and Gidget star, Sandra D. was repeatedly raped by her stepfather between the ages of 5 and 12. Jean didn't molest me only in the mornings, but during the day, the night, whenever he wanted to, and there was an opportunity, D. once revealed in an interview. He'd say, let's snuggle, and I never fought back. I was too small, too young. The abuse ended just before Jean died, when Dee was 12 and on the verge of stardom. Billie Holiday When Billie Holiday was 10 years old, one of her neighbors turned up at her apartment and told her that her mother had sent him. According to the Toronto Star, the man was a 40-something-year-old named Wilbert Rich. He took Holiday to a house under the false premise that she would be waiting there, at her mother's request, until her mother came to pick her up. Her mother didn't come, and it grew dark outside, so the sleepy Holiday lay down on a bed at Rich's suggestion. As soon as she did, Rich pinned her down and raped her. A woman who had let them into the house tried to hold Holiday's head and arms down. Holiday put up a fight, screaming and clawing at her attackers, and before long, police officers, accompanied by Holiday's mother, broke the door down. In Lady Sings the Blues, Holiday wrote that, after the attack, the cops at the precinct treated her like she'd killed somebody. They accused Holiday of seducing and coercing Rich, and as her mother cried and screamed and pleaded, the officers locked Holiday in a jail cell for two days. It's the worst thing that can happen to a woman, Holiday wrote of the attack in her autobiography, and here it was happening to me when I was ten. Tori Amos in 1984, Tori Amos was raped at age 21. After the musician performed at a bar, a patron asked her if he could have a ride home. She obliged, and he raped her at knife point. She escaped. Years later, in London, the singer watched the film Thelma and Louise and was moved by it. On the way to a show, she wrote a song in her head, Me and a Gun, which was about her tragic rape. That night, she performed the song a cappella. It was released as the first single from her debut studio album Little Earthquakes, and she made it a point to sing it in front of live audiences. Mackenzie Phillips Mackenzie Phillips claims that in 1978, when she was 19, the night before her wedding, she was raped by her father, John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas. The relationship turned consensual, and lasted almost 10 years. Mackenzie became pregnant and didn't know if it was her father's or her husband's baby, so she had an abortion, and that's when she ended the incestuous relationship. Alyssa Milano Credited with starting the MeToo movement on Twitter in 2017, Alyssa Milano says she was sexually assaulted as a teen but stayed quiet about it. Thirty years later, inspired by Ford's testimony, Milano recently wrote about her story in Vox. It took me years after my assault to voice the experience to my closest friends. It took me three decades to tell my parents that the assault had even happened. I never filed a police report. I never told officials. I never tried to find justice for my pain because justice was never an option, she writes. For me, Speaking up meant reliving one of the worst moments of my life. It meant recognizing my attacker's existence, when I wanted nothing more than to forget that he was allowed to walk on this earth at all. This is what every survivor goes through. Telling our stories means being vulnerable to public attacks and ridicule when our only crime was to be assaulted in the first place. Anne H. Anne H. was raped and molested by her father from the time she was a toddler until she was 12, which led to mental illness struggles. She spoke in detail to Barbara Walters about her horrifying ordeal. The actress even contracted herpes as a young girl. I had a rash, I had sores, I had welts on my nose and on my lips. When she found out her father had AIDS, she feared for her life. To get away from her painful upbringing, Anne says, I drank. 
I smoked. I did drugs. I had sex with people. I did anything I could to get the shame out of my life. She said she used acting as a way to escape.